Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to talk about the motions that affect our ability to locate things on the celestial sphere. Remember, the celestial sphere is fixed relative to the position of the Earth at a particular moment in time. But the Earth is constantly rotating and the Earth is revolving around the Sun. And also when we start looking at the Moon, we realize that the Moon looks different every night and also moves through the sky just kind of like the stars. And it's rises at different times of the night from day to day to day because the moon is revolving around the earth and so all these motions affect the way we observe things. So the two main motions that we should be concerned about in order for us to understand how to locate things on the celestial sphere are one, that the earth is rotating and two, that the earth orbits around the sun. Also keeping in mind that the planets move, so when we're observing the planets, their motion around the sun are going to affect where we're going to find them from night to night, and the motion of the moon is also important, especially when we're, of course, observing the moon. But let's start with the simple thing. Let's look at the stars and the constellations. When you go out at night and you observe the stars and constellations, if you stay there for a while and you observe them, you can see that they tend to move over time. If, for example, you came out at midnight and you saw a bright star like Vega directly above you, and then you look at it again an hour later, you find that it's no longer directly above you, it now has moved a certain distance. How far has it moved? Well, it turns out that the Earth rotates on its axis once every 24 hours, roughly 23 hours and 56 minutes, 360 degrees, and it does that in a 24 hour period. So things move in the sky at about 15 degrees per hour, which means that if you look at Vega at midnight, one hour later, it will have moved at an angle of 15 degrees relative to the point directly above us. Remember, that point is called the zenith. Two hours later, Z Venus will now be 30 degrees away from the zenith. Three hours later, 45 degrees. Four hours later, it will be 60 degrees. Five hours later, it will be 75 degrees. And six hours later, if it was directly above us at midnight, at six in the morning, Vega would be right at the horizon, ready to dip over the horizon. You could no longer see it at that point. Wow, so that's how things move to the sky. So if something came up at midnight, six hours later, six in the morning, it would be directly above us at the zenith, and then as it becomes light, it would disappear from sight. Also what we find is that we see certain stars and certain constellations at some times of the year, and other times of the year, they're simply not visible to us because they're only above us during the daytime when the sun drowns out all the light from the stars and we can't see it. Another thing that we need to think about is, okay, how, how far will things move in a month? Let's say that Vega was up there at midnight at a certain time. A month later, where would we look for Vega at midnight again? Well, let's see here. If the Earth goes around the Sun once per year, and that would be 360 degrees, so let's do that calculation again, 360 degrees, and we divide that by 12 months, that would be 12 goes into 360, 30 degrees per month. Which means that if we saw Vega directly above us at midnight, one month later it will have moved 30 degrees and it'll, at midnight it will be at an angle of 30 degrees. Two months later it will be at an angle of 60 degrees away from the zenith and three months later when we come and look at Vega at midnight we have to look at the horizon and we might just be able to catch it before it sinks over the horizon. So. Things move at 15 degrees per hour throughout each night and move at 30 degrees per month throughout the year. So if a star rises at midnight, let's say in April, we come back in May, the star, may, the star will already be at an angle of 30 degrees at midnight. We come back in June, it'll be at an angle of 60 degrees relative with the horizon. And then a month later, it'll be directly above us at midnight and so forth. So that's how those two motions affect where things are and how they move throughout the night and from night to night. So if things move through the night sky at 30 degrees per month, that is about one degree per day. So even though during the night things move through the sky at 15 degrees per hour because of the Earth's rotation, because of the Earth revolving around the Sun, things move at one degree per day, which means that if we look at Vega there, at midnight directly above us, one day later it'll have moved one degree, two days later we'll have moved two degrees, three days later we'll have moved three degrees and so forth. So over the weeks and months things do move to, to different positions in the sky 
if we go out there at the same time of the night and look for things to observe. What about the moon? Notice the moon has what we call a side real month and a synodic month, and that's important to understand. Side real is usually associated with a position fixed to the stars. So relative to the stars, how long does it take the moon to go around the Earth once? And it turns out it's 27.3 days. So if I assume this to be the Earth right here, and this is the moon, not to scale, by the way, the moon's a little bit bigger than that relative to the Earth, but since that's all I have at this moment, I'll just use this. So notice that the moon will go around the Earth in a counterclockwise direction looking from the north. So if I look at the North Pole, let's say I fly up there in the space, spacecraft and I see the moon going around the Earth, it will go around the Earth like this. At the same time, the Earth will also rotate in the same direction and the Earth will revolve around the Sun in a counterclockwise direction, just like the moon goes around the Earth. The fixed to the stars all around us, the moon will go around the Earth once every 27.3 days. But to us, it appears to take longer. The reason is because while the moon is doing that, the Earth is also going around the sun. So let's say the sun is right here, the Earth is right here, the moon is right there. As it goes around, if it takes 27.3 days to get to the same point, relative to the Earth, of course, notice that the Earth will have moved. And then for the moon to be again in the line with the Earth's sun like that, it has to travel for about another two days to be back in the line with the Earth and the moon and the sun, which means for the moon to go through its phases, it takes about 29.5 days, and we call that the synodic month. So it actually has to travel more than one orbit around the, around the Earth to get back to its original phase that we started with. So if you understand those things, that will really help in understanding how to find things in the celestial sphere using the celestial coordinate system. The celestial, uh, the celestial coordinate system is called right ascension and angle of declination and in the next videos we'll explain to you how to utilize those to find things in the sky. Of course some of us have our handy cell phone we can just point to the star and look for stars that way but it really helps to be able to find it based upon its coordinate system as well and that's what we're going to do in the next videos.